So we have a situation today where we have all these stimuli trying to gain our brain's attention. And so our brain skips from one thing to another, text messages to the latest info on Facebook. And uh, it's just a never-ending stream of all the stimuli competing for our attention. And, uh, and when we let our brains go wherever they want to go, there gets to be the point where the brains, our brains are controlling us and they're dragging us all over. See, Ty can't be walked the ordinary way. He pulls like crazy. Much like our minds. Who's in control? You or your mind? adrenaline rush every time you answer a text, play a video game, and your brain releases chemicals that cause you to really enjoy that, and then after a while it becomes an addiction. So there are exercises you can do, uh oh, uh oh, calm down Ty. There's exercises you can do to discipline your mind. Make sure you're controlling your mind and your mind's not controlling you. Concentration is the leash for our brains. Just like the leash is training Ty to walk normally, concentration teaches our brains to function normally and optimally. So one form of brain exercise you can do is just to be in the present moment. And what does that mean? It simply means to take things in with your senses, your hearing, your, uh, your sense of sight, smell, just take in the environment around you rather than being lost in your thoughts, worried about the future, or thinking about the past or something like that. Just take in your environment. You guys having a good time checking out the environment? Looking for rabbits to terrorize? Yeah, life is good. This is the first sunrise, 2017. So as hunter-gatherers, our mind was continually immersed in our environment for the sake of survival. Looking for food, trying to avoid being food. And so our brain developed under conditions in which we were immersed in our senses. And there's actually been research that's been done. There's a researcher that linked people up with their iPhones and he would um, randomly text them and ask them how happy they were and, and ask them what they were doing. And what he found out was that if uh, they were immersed in their surroundings, even if what they were doing wasn't very thrilling, like driving somewhere, if they were simply mindful of their surroundings, they were a lot happier. So there's some scientific evidence that you're also happier when you're simply taking in your environment, like my dogs are doing right now, looking for rabbits. You're, uh, you're happier taking in your environment than being lost in thought. So one form of mindfulness involves just keeping track of what you're thinking about throughout the day. First thing I thought about when I got up is that I would sleep in. And the second thing I thought about when I got up was this dream I had about my cat. And I realized the reason I had the dream is because I Skyped my two brothers last night and they showed me their cats during the Skype. Uh, but my cat's dead, so in my dream, the cat was in the freezer. I, don't, I have no idea why. So anyway, one form of mindfulness involves keeping track of your thinking. I like to, I like to think of it as watching a movie of your life as it unfolds throughout the day. But it's a form of mental exercise. Try it.
you can do for your brain is exercise. So, 139 beats per minute. So, scientists believe when we were hunter gatherers, we would uh, go as far as 12 kilometers a day looking for food. And so, it's no wonder that our brain takes 20% of, of the oxygen that we need. And a big percentage of our glucose, big percentage of glucose and oxygen that our body requires is required by the brain. Our brain is used to moving and uh, blood flow is going to help uh, get rid of waste and bring food and oxygen. And uh, so exercise is a huge part of brain health and it's been shown to be as effective as antidepressants also for dealing with depression and anxiety. So our brains are adapted for exercise. In this video I've been talking about brain health and that's related to brain exercise which means meditating or concentrating on what your five senses are bringing in analyzing your thoughts and watching them throughout the day or focusing on a singular thing like your breath. All of those are brain exercises that are proven to increase brain health. Two roads diverged in a wood and I, I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. That quote by Robert Frost kind of sums up the journey of the mind. Will we let our brain take us wherever it wants to go on autopilot? Or will we use our minds to focus our brains and take the hard road, the road less traveled?